my number plates have now been uh, now been degreased as per the last little video shot and I'm now going to apply some um, acid etch paint primer uh, it's not an acid etch that's a primer with the acid built into it that because paint doesn't stick to brass like it doesn't stick to zinc very well so uh, you won't have this paint primer I got but I've got loads of it so I use it but other other brands are available now as you've saw before I, I've placed it on top of a piece of um, uh, masking tape with the sticky side up so that the plates stick to it and stay still don't have to use my hands at all and also the sticking to the bottom of the plate means the paint won't go underneath it to make sure of that I'm gonna press it down with a nice smooth flat piece of cardboard scrap so I'll do that press it down make sure it is fully down like that and what I'm also going to do with the same piece of cardboard on the plain area of it this is my hope this is work is to apply some well this is a cellulose primer so I'm use some cellulose thinners to soak into the cardboard like this and that soak in there a while I want it damp to us to wipe the excess paint off there's no way you can get that paint on such a tiny uh, recess as that etch recess meaning the depth of etch uh, to flow around those numbers I wouldn't have thought so I'm going to try so this is why I'm filming it to show you this method put more on evaporates quickly I've never done this before not not, on, not with cellulose so it may work it may not so th this is the primer, it's green, greeny yellow stuff they use in aerospace. I've already shaken it up and mixed it. I'm just apply it inside and over the shiny brass bit which you want to preserve, but and down the edges, because that's also going to be coloured in later. So plonk it on, it goes all around the edge, so you don't have to hold it. Hope this works. You don't need much. It, it, it's a light water, so it just needs to cover. You don't need to fill it up. That's the job of the black paint afterwards. Okay, it makes it doesn't pool in the in the recesses of the the four and around the back of the five, like that. All right, done around the edge. Wipe the brush. Wash that in a minute. Come back to it. I'll put it in the thinners. Right, right now, will all this work? Is that still damp? I don't know. Cellulose thinner does evaporate a bit quick. All right, I'm, I'm actually washing the brush, but I'm not <coughs> ruining it because it is an acid. All right, so let's take a bit more on there again. I'm out. Oh, will this work? So that flash off a little bit. If you can't see, see if there's a high gloss or that. That's it. I just want it to go damp. Maybe it's not quite the right sort of cardboard dish, but just happen to have it around. It's one of the things I put down the side of locomotives and coach bodies to put, pull the bodies off. That is cardboard. That's what I do. Right. That's my second for that to finish. I want it too wet. I don't want it dry either. I'll smear it off with my finger. Get rid of the work. That's it. Just down right. I'm going to plonk that on top of that. Hold it down. And I'm just going to pull it backwards. And hopefully. Yes. It has removed it from the top of the letters. There's the, the residue. See it on there? Yep. Yeah. You probably can't see it at this angle. <coughs> you can probably try and move the camera. It's on a tripod at the minute. So you can see. It could be a bit tricky doing this. But get the light. Yeah, there you go. See the shine? So it's just removed it from where I wanted to remove it. That was an easy way of doing that. What you don't do is try to paint around those numbers. That's a waste of time. Okay. 
there we go leave that to dry for a few hours or preferably overnight I might even lift them off and stick them to a radiator once it's flashed off to bake it because in, in aerospace you'd actually put them in an oven uh, about 190 degrees and, and bake them for a, an hour or so but I haven't, I haven't got that luxury and don't put them in a microwave <laughs> right I'll leave it there and come back later The, um, the primer is now dried, stunk like hell, it's, it's got some nasty chemicals in it, but it's probably one of the best primers you'll find. <laughs> so now we're going to have a bash at doing the, um, the black, which is, uh, I'm going to use Humbrol Gloss, it's quite thick as you'll find out, although they do vary from tin to tin, I don't know why, but they do. So, Right, so I'll do the paint bit first, around the edges. Let's get this bit of paper where I can wipe the paintbrush nearer me. Not too much. See, it's quite gloopy. I don't know if you can see. There you can see, look at the surface. See, it's all ripply. <laughs> it's like a jelly. It's like, what's that paint they used to have? Lob and drip. That rubbish paint that was. They're doing households for people who couldn't paint. Alright, so I'm just going to go around the edge, like this, Oops. so it doesn't matter what you do want to get it on, on that little edge recess and down the sides. Oh, it takes, it takes, the annoying if it doesn't. This, this special primer is meant to allow any type of paint to take to it. Oh. If not, I have to have a second coat, won't it? I won't know till it's sort of tomorrow. It's dried. It'll naturally flow around it and flow off, I suppose. You don't want it to do thin. Preferably, you want to take this to. Taking one at application. <clears throat> All right. Now, I want the paint off the brush. Now, see if this works. Just use a oh, it's a metal probe, really. That's an ex dentist tool that never got blank for making dentist tools. It's good for dobbing into paint and, and things like that, or glue, super glue. It wipes clean, it's made of titanium, but it never corrodes or anything. I'll just drop that in there. Fly around there. This is supposed to be like a paint filling exercise. Doing that bit. Come on. I don't think you really want to do this with acrylic because you do want it to flow and level. Enamels are best for that. And a solid um, rod like this end is, unlike bristles on a brush, they don't splay out when you're poking and prodding like this. <clears throat> Oh, 
little bits between the and the curve of the inside of the five is a bit tricky. So there's no way you can do this by trying to guide it around the characters. jars here. <clears throat> one I wash paintbrushes in. One is brand new clean thinners. I mean let's get that out of the way. So as not to contaminate things. So yeah. I hope that got that paint. It's hard to tell with this high gloss finish. Yeah it's quite gloopy isn't it? Hmm I hope it's alright. I should, have, maybe I should have thinned it a bit really, but oh, I've done it now. Right, so using this thing again, a bit of cardboard, again with a bit of, well I know that uh, um, <coughs> white spirit will Spirit seems to attack the surface. Okay, so you can see the little little lumpy bits. Hmm, better find myself another bit of cardboard. That's no good. I ah, just ruined the thing, wouldn't it? Having all those bits everywhere. Not sure, wash me brush. Got me all stuck in the presses either. <coughs> oh, better do a pause now while I find another bit of cardboard. Alright. Tetley tea. Um, tea bag box. Okay, gold, but plain ordinary cardboard on this side. There's none of that um, white stuff that the other business card things have. So hopefully this will work. Oh yeah, that soaks in all right. Dampen that all over. <coughs> or most of it, like that. Yeah. <laughs> Comes a moment of truth, doesn't it? I might have to do this a few times actually. Because this is quite thick paint compared with that um <coughs> that um primer stuff. So I'll start over here. thing it's more of an agitation brush I think I've got it from a motor accessory shop or a load of them very useful for cleaning carburetors and that and agitating things Get them muck out of nooks and crannies it's as stiff as a really stiff brush this perfect for this sort of thing right I'll try this again Wiggle, wiggle. I'm drawing it backwards, you notice. Know, it's, it's moving this way. Move it around and around and around as well. What's that doing? You got there? Hmm. I think 
have. And so I'm going to pick the tripod up again and go at an angle so you can see. And what I will do afterwards then to stop dust and stuff like that getting in the way, I'll just put a cup over it like that, to stop dust. And what's it landing on it? It takes quite a while to dry. I'm going to pick the tripod up again and show you an angle. So you can see, I think I've got it all nice and shiny, brassy bits. I think that looks complete. I haven't missed anything. It looks the edge going around border yeah that looks fine so put this back get in the right place that's about right mate. Yeah, enough so <clears throat> let's stop while we're ahead so let's put that over the top and we call that a day Well, the paint has now dried. It's been quite a while, so nearly 24 hours. So hopefully that'll be all right. What's that there? Oh, some little, little mark just there. I don't know. I don't know what that is. A little mark just there, see it? Little dot, I don't know. Anyway, I can always touch that up later. Main thing is to get most of the painting around it. Uh, I don't know if the, the edges are going need, might need a little bit more paint around the edge there, but I'm not doing it on air. I'm going to take it off. Oh, there'll be too much paint build up and there'll be a big. Well, let's see what happens. I'm going to take it, take it off. Just get hold of it. No, this end will be easier from a filming point of view. Let's lift it up. I have got clean hands. Can, there you go. There's a slight ripple in the black paint, but it is gl glossy. I suppose when it was a real casting, that they would never have been dead flat. But that's just me making excuses. I should if I ever do this again. I make sure I thin the paint a bit. You want it light, well, single cream. I suppose you want it though. Not like um, clotted cream. <laughs> so I'm, what I'm doing is I'm pulling, bending the tape back like that, and it has left an edge there. I can see that. Take that off carefully. Yes. I'll just take it off and put it on a new bit of tape. I think. Carefully. That one. Put it down. This one. Put it like that. Yeah, so that's what's left behind. So what have we got? Let's put these on top of some black. Uh, looks like I might have to. What's that pickup tool again? Mm -hmm. Oh, we certainly haven't got any paint underneath, as you can see. That black bit worked all right. <coughs> Around the outside, and I thought that might be a trouble, a problem. Yeah, what are we going to do about that? Well, we can rub it off. Let's try this bit, of, this other bit of cardboard here. Just do that with it. Yeah, that pushes it over. Without using sort of um, not using a file. See that brings it up smooth. Doing that, it should just come off. They are. Oh, it's coming off because paint is a basically thin plastic, or enamel certainly is. It's also left. Oh, there you go. Look, it comes off. See that. My finger, there yeah, that shows up, doesn't it? Yeah, that sort of works, I think. Let's go around it like a 
you know, only in a downward direction. I thought, oh, keep over there so you can see it. Work me array around it. phone might ring in a second just made a funny noise not this phone landline hope it doesn't ring not much I can do about it if it does well there you go I'm using a oh. right, so, right, I'll come back to that that's working. A bit unconventional, I must admit. On the spot idea. That's uh, what you do when you think outside the box, I suppose. Okay. Go around. And I think what I'll do is a little bit of a white spirit afterwards I wipe it off along the bottom the roughness of real raw cardboard is just enough abrasion to remove that paint or get it to part from the sharp edge there's a little bit of shine there I can touch that up afterwards but Right, that got a nice smooth edge to it, a little bit in there, a bit more there. So, uh, a little bit of tissue paper now, where's it? Uh, there you go. In fact, using that rubbing technique again, a bit of turf on the edge there. I don't know, yeah, that might work. Put it on there. Pick that up, move the tool gun, and try to pick it up there, put it on there, just to and carefully just rub it like that. Oh there, see, that takes that's a residue. Has it come off? There you go, look at that. Uh, hey. <coughs> Do the same with that one. Come on, pick up tool. You're supposed to this is a new one, should pick it up. There you go, put it on there. Yeah, oh, loads on there. not working how's that there we go oh there you are there's a brand new technique you have never seen that done before <laughs> so now if i lift it up to the camera <coughs> get the things to turn around the contrast there's still a little bit there i can see hang on yeah hang on that one About like that and slide it across like that there we go now lift it up and see what we got i'll have to get it back here to get it my fingers underneath it <coughs> yeah. ah stay still now i'll apply them to the loco well, i might film that later at some point with a bit of double-sided tape which I don't suggest you use to, to stick to here because you, as you see I can easily lift that off so a double sided tape, proper double sided tape will stick really well to that and you won't be able to get it off and it will stick to the paint and everything else Oops. there you go anyway how can we get this even better if I turn it upside down get it on the back of that there now how that would focus in this I could probably zoom in Post processing actually, it has that ability. Can't do it now, well, can I? Probably won't. Yeah. Ooh, there you go. That's a bit violent, wasn't it? Is that in focus? Yeah, it's not bad, is it? There you go, what's it like on the edges? Oh, the very edges, little. Uh, it's very difficult to get paint to stick to that very tiny, thin edge. 
This is an O gauge thing. I don't, ooh, don't know what you're doing there. I suppose the double O ones you tend to buy tend to be pre painted. So this manufacturer is just an old boy. 80 odd year bloke, 80 odd year old bloke. Um, just does the etching bit, you have to do the rest. But the numbers apparently are spot on for the font and everything. I mean, he says he's well researched. Um, I talked to him and quite impressed. But he plans to give up, like, well, it's 2023 now, and he might be giving up this year. And he said, if you've got any more plans to have locos, to buy them in batch and get them done in advance. But if he's stopping soon, there's a warning to you. Okay, I think that just about does it. 